I get up. So today, I'm gonna give my take on an Adirondack chair that doesn't put you on the ground, and I think it's gonna turn out awesome, as long as I don't destroy it along the way. And, oh boy. Oh, and they're, oh. So I'm gonna be using cedar for this build, and I've got some rough cedar two by fours here, but I can't really see the grain, so I'm gonna run through the plane real quick, and then we'll see what we're working with. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with cedar because it can just be really nasty and there are a lot of knots in these boards and the color doesn't match exactly how I would like it to, but it's what I could find. I'll pick through these and figure out which ones are best and then we'll start building the legs and the seat base. So the front legs on my Adirondack chair are gonna be straight up, but for the back legs, we're not gonna go for the typical Adirondack where they just lean them all the way back and it's like some crazy harsh angle and you just can hardly get up out of it. Instead, we're gonna go with a 15 degree angle with a much more flat seat to relax and actually enjoy yourself in. So, let's do it. Now I cut the first 15 degree angle on the back leg, but now I have to cut the bottom one. And what I want to do is make sure that the length of it is gonna be the same length as the front. And so I just came up with this little idea and I don't know if this is gonna work or not, <laughs> but we're gonna try it. So what I'm gonna do is take this little off cut that came off the end and this is at 15 degrees. And I'm gonna butt this up up against the straight leg and then I'm gonna bring over my angled leg. So now this is flush across the top and now I can just strike a flush line across this bottom and it should work. So now I got it 15 degrees the other way and I can just line it up against my mark and then use this little point against my stop block and cut the other three back legs. I'm making two chairs if I didn't say that. I went ahead and cut the little top stretcher that's gonna connect the front and back legs, put a little 15 degree angle on that as well. And here is what the little assembly is gonna look like. So this is gonna fit together or drop and it's cedar. So, you know, it's probably destroyed now. All right, this is gonna go together just like a beast and have a nice little 15 degree splay. And uh, yeah, now we just need some joinery. You can do joinery a lot of different ways on these. You can use pocket screws, you can use dowels, or I'm gonna be using some dominoes. <laughs> well, look at Mr. Fancy Pants. You drank that green Kool-Aid, didn't you? Yes, Chuck, I've got a domino now. Yeah, I bet they send them things free to all you influencers. No, unfortunately, they did not send this to me for free. I had to buy it with my own money. Well, you gonna give me that $70 Comax you done showed? Yeah, I mean, the Comax is still good and like, you can have it if you want it. Well, hot dog, I'm happier than a pig in mud. All right, Chuck, you enjoy that thing. <laughs> All right, let's do some joinery. All right, now let's do a little dry fit and see how these go together. All right, there we go. That turned out perfect. I guess we can do a glue up now. Glue ups can be super stressful, and so to make things a little bit easier, I have a little box of goodies just for this situation. Uh, these are off cuts that are different degrees of angles, and I've got them marked on the back here. So we've got 15, we've got 10, we've got 12. I'm gonna use these to help clamp and then that way it won't slide as much and move around. So keep a little thing of off cuts and gluing some sandpaper on there. It's gonna make your gloves a lot easier. You're still gonna have disasters, but at least it'll be an easy disaster. And I am using an outdoor wood glue that is waterproof. I'm just gonna take this 15 degree and put it right here at the end, and then that way I can clamp it all straight. So this clamp is wanting to pull this in a little bit, so I'm just gonna throw a little square in here and hold that in place while it dries. So I'm gonna clamp up the other three and then let them dry overnight and they'll be ready tomorrow. 
Now, even though I despise the Adirondack chair sitting angle, I think one thing they do well is they have kind of a contoured seat. So a nice little place for your buttocks. So I want my chairs to have a nice little curve on the seat as well. And I drew this up in SketchUp and I took over to the CNC and cut out this little quarter inch MDF template. And that's got just a nice little curve here. And I'll use this to cut out my two by fours for the seat and get identical sides. If you don't have to move a ladder to make long cuts on your miter saw, are you really even in a garage shop? Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but I have a major fear of commitment with my projects. I was kind of worried about the seat and how it's going to feel, so I built this. <laughs> this thing is a monstrosity. <laughs> this is a mock-up of the seat. I actually cut out some little MDF side runners that are thicker and then put some legs so the seat height would be the same. It's even got a nice little ergonomical back. I'm going to put the slats on here and sit on it and see how it feels. This could be a disaster. So I'm just gonna lay the little seat slats down here. And, oh, oh boy, I hope that doesn't happen to me when I sit down. <laughs> All right, this is looking good. And this front part is actually what I'm worried about, about how it's gonna feel on there. I'm not sure how I'm gonna keep these without, ooh, tape. All right. <laughs> this is so janky. And because I'm too lazy to go get my wide angle lens, I'm just gonna sit on it up here. <laughs> This could be a really bad idea. All right. Oh my gosh. These front legs are a little wobbly. <laughs> I'm not even thinking about how the seat feels. I'm just thinking about dying. This is nice. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be too deep maybe. I like this. Hey, right. actually, I guess we're done. This is uh, Chuck's new Adirondack chair. <laughs> <laughs> now, this fit me okay, but I think we need to see how it fits some other members of the family. So I have my son come up here and check it out. All right, come on, jump up there. I don't know how I feel about this. I uh, know, you should not feel good about it. Why is it taped? <laughs> don't worry about it. No, it's okay. Good. Just sit down, just sit down gently. Scooch, scooch back. I feel tall. Feel tall? So is the, the seat feels high? Mm-hmm. Okay. Especially since it's on the table. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> it feels like a nice seat. It also feels like splinters. Well, we will sand it down, I promise. All right, nice work. All right, I do feel good about this shape, and so now I can transfer it over to the parts for the seat that the little uh, slats are gonna sit onto. And also I can just kind of look at this and try to avoid some of the knots. I'll double stick tape this on there and then cut away most of the excess, and then I'll use a pattern bit to get it exactly the size of the template. Now I can just pry the template off here. Now I can just use this and the flush trim bit on the other ones. I do need to cut the 15 degree bevel on the back here still, so the template just wasn't quite long enough for the piece that I had. But we could go in on the rest of them, then we could put the seat together. And while I'm finishing those parts, let's hear about today's sponsor, Viator. So it's summertime, we like to hang out around the campfire, but also we like to go on adventures with our kids while they're out of school. And we just got done with a zip lining experience that we found here in Nashville on Viator. Now, Viator is the world's largest travel experience marketplace. They have over 300,000 options you can choose from. You can look for things locally like we did, or you can plan a weekend getaway or a day trip to another city. And we've done all the typical Nashville sightseeing and my kids don't really love country music anyway, so we wanted something fun and outdoors. So I started going through the outdoor activity section on Viator and it made it easy to see detailed descriptions and reviews of all the different options. And ziplining was perfect for our teenage boys and adventurous daughter. Viator has a wide range of travel experiences from simple tours all the way up to zip lining adventures and everything in between with lots of fun and interesting things to do. And they've got free cancellation, payment options, and 24-7 support, so they give you a ton of flexibility. So if you're looking for an adventure, head over to Viator.com, or you can download their app and see what they have to offer. And thanks to Viator for sponsoring today's video. I've got the seat bases already, and I've got the big stack of slats right here to go on top of them. But I don't want to just assemble these straight on there because I'm going to have to finish them. And these slats are going to be really tight together with only about an eighth of an inch apart, and so it'll be really hard to get finish in between there even if I was spraying, 
which I'm not gonna be. So before I put the finish on these pieces, I do wanna put the countersunk holes in there and I have a little drill press set up with a countersink bit and a little jig I made so I can just put it on there and drill down to the exact spot on each one because you wanna make sure that it is perfectly centered and aligned. Of course, this is cedar, which I mentioned, which is a pretty knotty wood. It's always doing bad things. So I'm gonna fill these knots with CA glue, so it just helps that finish stand up over time and water won't seep in there and try to rot out the wood. Since this is outdoor furniture, I wanna use a marine grade finish, so I'm gonna use some Total Boat Gleam 2.0. And for the first coat, I'll thin it by 25%, and then for the rest of them, we'll do them full strength. And we'll have about three coats total, and I'm gonna do that over on the table so I can keep working on other things while that's drying. I'm gonna assemble the chair base actually just like I did the mock-ups. Two little stretchers that go across on the inside, so that'll keep everything nice and stable as I'm putting on the slats. And I did clamp down a straight edge to the front. I'm gonna reference the front of the seat bases on those because if these are off a little bit, it could make that front be off and then the slats would look weird. So the base coat is dry and now I'm gonna do some assembly and then I'm actually gonna spray on the final coats after everything is assembled. I've got the 13 slats here and I'm gonna start with this and pre-drill it and then screw it in and then work my way back. And I have these little eighth inch spacers that I'm gonna put in between each little rung. I may not do it in the front because they kind of open up, but definitely in the back. And then that will let water drain if it does get wet and it will have a really nice look to it. Oh my gosh, last one that dropped it. All right. Woo, that's looking good. Oh yeah, that looks nice. And next up, I'm gonna make the armrest. And I went ahead and cut it out on the CNC again. And I have a little template here. And I like it being nice and wide because it'll be a place to put a drink, maybe a plate, some donuts, coffee. I don't eat coffee. Mountain Dew. So I got these wide cedar boards and I traced the outline with a little extra on it. I'm gonna cut that out on the bandsaw. Then I'm gonna come back and trim it flush with the router. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the pattern bit to cut the shape out. And I haven't told you something, but all these router bits that I've been using today, this is a special set. We have partnered with Whiteside Router Bits. They make amazing router bits. So this is a Fix This Build That and Whiteside exclusive, so you won't find this anywhere else. And these four bits, which are awesome for this project, this is like a great premium starter set. So we've got the pattern bit, an eighth inch round over, a chamfer, and a carbide spiral upcut bit. So we're doing a limited run to see how they do, and maybe we'll get more, but right now there's only 100. There's a link down below in the description. If you've been looking for some great quality router bits, go check it out. The last pieces to shape are the back, and I'm gonna have five boards per back, and there's gonna be a quarter inch spacer in between each of them. Now I wanna have the nice traditional arch top on there, because. I do like that look of the Adirondack chair. And I have a straight edge down here, so I'm gonna clamp it down and line everything and then draw my arc on the top. With the rough shape cut out on the bandsaw, now I'm just going to sand to the edge on my edge sander here. And because it is symmetrical, I can take these outer ones and then just flip it and sand them both at the same time up to that line. All right, it's time for this thing to start coming together. I've got the legs here, I'm gonna put the base on and I'm going to clamp a little scrap here to the side and I'm gonna do that on both sides and then allow that to rest on top and then we'll secure it with screws from the inside to keep all the fasteners hidden. All right, should be able to take these off. See what it looks like. 
I've got the back laid out here and I've already got the spacers in. And the way I'm gonna hold this together and assemble it is there's gonna be a board across the bottom that will run the whole width. And this will actually fit down in between the little seat sides. And then on the top, we'll have another one to hold everything together. And after this, I've got one more cleat there that I'm gonna put across the back as high as I can go to get that good support and link it into the armrests. All right, let's see how we did. Spacers out. No screws poking through, so <laughs> that's a win. All right, let's get this in the chair. I haven't exactly played out how this is gonna work, but uh, let me start by seeing if this fits in here. Okay, now I need to figure out how to get 15 degrees. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't just fall through, please. Oh, like that. All right, I got my little angle finder, which is uh, usually used for the table saw, but I guess it'll work here too. All right, let's see what we can get. This is right about there. Ooh. Aha! Okay. All right, this will work. All right, everything is held into place, and I'm going to drill a couple holes here to go in and secure it from each side, and then I'll counterbore those so I can later plug those with some cedar dowels. Now I can use this last cleat on the back and I will ride this all the way up to the top of the armrest. So I'll get as much support on that back as I can. And then I'll do the same thing, attaching it through the side and then plugging up those holes. Now to attach the dinner platters, or excuse me, the armrest, I'm gonna have these right up here in their put your dent in your project before you put it into use. It makes it easier. Anyway, they're going to go right here. <laughs> and that is a great segue into to have some support for this wide overhang. I made these little corbels and I just cut these out and sanded them on the sander and put little countersunk holes in there. So I'm going to countersink some holes under this base piece here and I'll screw straight up into it and then put this little corbel right here and we should be nicely supported and not have it fall off. Now this is what an Adirondack chair should be. The seat height is perfect for calisthenics or just getting up. And we've got these nice big armrests to put your cold drink and just enjoy your summer. If you wanna check out some other outdoor furniture, I've got a playlist queued up for you right there. If you wanna build this chair, I do have plans available. Check them out in the description. A big shout out to the FTBT Builders Club. I'm Brad, until next time, get out there and build something awesome.